What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be bringing you a two-part video where we'll be creating a tic-tac-toe bot which is going to be completely 100% unbeatable. We are going to be doing this by utilizing an algorithm called Minimax which I'm going to be explaining in detail in the second part of the series. The first part is going to consist of me creating the base tic-tac-toe game and the second will be me actually implementing this algorithm and creating the bot. So you may have actually watched my first tic-tac-toe tutorial, which will be very similar to the one we are making in this video today, except I'm going to be making a few minor changes to how we handled the game mechanics in the first tic-tac-toe video so that it can utilize the Minimax algorithm a little more easily. The complete code for this project is going to be in the description below, and I will include a version of the file with the base tic-tac-toe game, so everything that we'll be creating in part one of this video, um, just in case you want to jump straight into part two and the actual Minimax implementation. All right, so let's hop straight into the code. Alrighty, so the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do here is actually define some sort of board. In the first part, um, or in the first tic-tac-toe video I made, I, made, I uh, implemented the board with an array representation, but in this, I'm going to use a dictionary, actually, and I think it's going to make the code a lot more readable and a lot more straightforward to a lot of you guys. Okay, so let's define a, a variable called board. And let's set it equal to a dictionary, and it's going to, each part in the dictionary is going to represent a certain spot on the board, right? And it's going to be um, horizontally, each um, square that the player can go to is so going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right, so we're gonna initialize all of these just to an empty space, just like this. Um, if I put, that's a comma right there. Uh, okay. Three, um, and that, and then I'm gonna come down here and just go like this so that it's a little more readable. It's gonna look like an actual board. Why am I getting errors right here? Because I didn't put a comma right there, that's why. I got a new keyboard um, recently, so that's why I'm gonna be having a little more uh, sloppy spelling uh, or clicks here, just because I'm getting used to the new keyboard and my recording setup, it's a little janky. Uh, so, excuse that, but now that is pretty much it all right so after we have created this board here let's go ahead and define a function that's going to be able to print the board and display it to the user so let's define print board and we're going to actually pass in board as a parameter here and then basically what we're going to do is we're going to print out each index within this dictionary so we're going to put in board bracket one plus and then we're going to put a little pipe in right here Plus board bracket two. Plus board bracket two. Plus another pipe. And then we're going to do board bracket three. And then we're going to come down here and let's go ahead and we're going to print dash plus dash plus dash just to kind of give that grid feel to a tic tac toe board. And then we're going to go ahead and print out this line again. And then we're gonna go ahead, print this line again, and we're going to print this line again. Okay, and now we just gotta go ahead and change these values. So this is gonna be four, five, six. Whoops. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, there we go. And then we can go ahead down here at the bottom and we can just print out a new line just to eliminate some of the clutter within the terminal window. Okay, so now after we do this, I'm going to create one more function. This is going to be more of a helper function and it's just going to determine whether or not a position is available to go into, right? So basically what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if there's a space there. And if there's a space there, then we know that um, the player has made a move there. Let's define a function and let's just call it a space is free. 
and we're going to pass in some sort of position and this position is going to represent a position on the board and then what we're going to do is um, we can check to see if board bracket position and we can check to see if this is equal to a space then we can just return true otherwise we can just return false so now after we have this what we can do is we can actually code out the um, uh, logic for inserting a letter at a point in the board right so let's define a function called insert letter what we can do here is we can pass in the letter and this is going to represent whichever person's up so this is either going to be x or o and then it's going to then we're going to pass in a position which is going to represent a spot on the board so what we can do is the first thing we want to do is check to see if this is a valid position right so all we got to do is use this nice little helper function that we just created so what we can do is say if space is free and then what we can do is pass in the position Then after this, what we can do is we can set the position on the board equal to the letter, right? So we can say board bracket position, and we can set board bracket position equal to the letter. And then what we can do is print the board again and pass in board. So now, after we've inserted the letter, this is the perfect time for us to check the game state. We can check to see if there's a draw on the board, if a player won, um, that's, and then so forth. So what we can do is we can check to see um, if, and then we can type tap into this function that we have not created yet, check draw. And then we can say um, print uh, draw. Let's do that. That's fine. You can print whatever you want here. If I could type print draw, and then we can just exit out of the program. And then we can say uh, if there's not a draw, we want to check to see if there's a win. So we can say if check win, and then we can say uh, we check to see what letter is to determine which person is the winner. So um, for our case, what we're going to do is we're going to designate X to the bot and O to the player. But we can say if letter equals X print bot wins. And then we can just exit out of the game. And then we can say um, elif or actually we can just put else here there's no other conditions print player wins and then exit out of the game perfect all right so um and then after all this we can just return to make sure nothing else um no nothing else funky is happening perfect um, and then what we can also do here is we can come down and we can add an else block to the space is free um, if statement and we can use this space to handle whether or not um, if the, the position the player inputted was an invalid position. So what we can do here is we can say first we'll prompt the user that that was a bad spot. So in valid position for uh, this invalid position and just keep it like that and then what we can do is we can ask the user to input a new position right so let's make a variable call it a position and we can set it equal to the int conversion of an input string We've got to convert to an int here so even though even if a player um, types in a number as the input here it's going to be stored in the computer as a string, right? And our positions in the board are integers, so we have to convert it to an integer. So what we can say is, please enter a new position. And then they can insert a new position there. 
And then what we can do is we can actually make a recursive call to this function to have it go through all these parameters again, except just pass in this new position. So then what we can do is say insert letter and then letter position. And then um, we just have to return. It's important to put these return statements in here whenever you're dealing with something recursively. But now that we've done this, we got to define these two functions that we just created here. Okay, so let's come down and let's define a function. Um, the first one we'll do is check when. And then we don't have to pass anything as a parameter in for this one, I believe. Um, and this one's actually just going to be a bunch of typing. But I don't, th I'm going to put this chunk of code in the description of the video so you can just copy and paste it into your code um, just because it's a lot of conditions here and there's nothing too complicated about this right so for checking for win basically all we're doing is we're checking all the conditions for winning and you guys know how that what that is for tic-tac-toe you can either get th you can get three in a row um three in a column or three diagonally in a row right and this pretty much just checks all those positions within our board up here right if one, two, and three are all equal to each other and that they are not a white space, then we know that they won, right? And if none of these conditions are met, then we know that there was no winner and there was false, okay? Um, and then what we can also do is we can check for draw. This function is gonna be a little more simple. So let's come down here and define check draw. And what we can do is we can just loop through all the different keys in the board dictionary that we created. So for every key in board dot keys, and then we can just check to see if that key is a space. So we can say if board bracket key equals space, then we know that there's still that are, there is not a draw. And then otherwise, we can just return true at the end. Basically, what we're doing here is we know that if there's a draw, then there's going to be no empty spaces on the board, right? So we're just checking to see if there's an empty space, because if there is one, then we know that there has not been a draw yet. Thus, we return false down there. Okay, so now we've gotten to check win, we've gotten check draw, we've gotten insert letter, space is free, print board, we got our board. So now we have to code in some sort of the logic. Okay, so let's make a new function down here and let's define it as player move and this is just going to represent how the player moves okay so it's going to be very similar to this inserting letter here right we're going to have to give some sort of position to this function to insert the letter there so what we're going to do is we need to ask for the user to have some sort of input so let's make a variable called a position and we'll set it equal to the integer conversion of an input string and we'll ask this to say um, enter a position for um, O. Okay, and then what we can do is we can call insert letter on um, this uh, person, right? So what we can do here is we can say the letter is going to be O. So actually, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make a variable called player. We're going to do that right after this. And then that we're going to pass in the position. And then let's go up to the top. And what we can do is we can say player set it equal to O. And then we can say computer set it equal to X. Okay. So now we can set that. And then what we can do is just return this method. And then we can come down and we can define a function for handling the computer's movements. And this is where we're going to be actually implementing the Minimax algorithm in the second part. But for the sake of this part, I'm just going to create the method pretty much the exact same as the player method, just so that we can get a testable game going. So let's define um, computer move. And then basically what we can do is just set a position and we can set it equal to this. We're just going to copy and paste this entire thing, actually. Just put it in here. Um, and then enter position for x. And then we'll put um, computer. And then return. Okay. So, 
this is pretty much all we really need to know for um, the compute for this base game to run. So let's come down here and let's create the actual game loop for this. Okay, so what we can do is we can just say while not check for win or just check win. And what we can do is just say computer move, computer's gonna go first, and then player move. And you can just change these two functions around depending on who you want to go first. So let's go ahead and run it and see if there's any errors. Enter a position for X. Let's go top left. Okay, so there's the X there. Let's enter position for O. Let's go second row. Um, and then let's go ahead and run. So let's go five, three for O, and then nine. And then the bot wins. There we go. Perfect. The bot is X. So everything seems like it's going perfectly, and that's a working tic-tac-toe game. So if you guys enjoy, stay tuned for the second part. We'll re-implement this actual bot. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.